G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the J7E. This is one of the new Chinese uh, fighters that has come to War Thunder with the new patch and it is one of the planes that I think a lot of people have been really sleeping on. A lot of people have been really hyped up over the MiG-23s, the F-5, the uh, new Pulse Doppler radar on the FGR-2, video on that very very soon. I've absolutely been listening to your comments and I have been trying to get myself some footage. And I have finally, and we will have a video on that very soon. But of course, J7E, no one really knows uh, what this was, or at least no one had heard of it before it has come to War Thunder. And now that it has, I'm kind of glad that it did. Essentially, the J7E is a double delta wing J7, which is basically a MiG-21F with a little bit more lift. And of course, this one comes with a little bit of a surprise. PL-5B missiles, which are basically AIM-9Js with a very, very sensitive seeker head and a little bit more of a wide, I think it's a bore. Uh, it's the big circle on the outside is a lot bigger than an AIM-9J. So they tend to have a couple of more interesting properties in that respect. Um, so I would kind of put them between an AIM-9G and an AIM-9P um, with sometimes R60-like tracking. It's very, very interesting, this missile, and of course it is unique to the PLAAF. So this particular plane sits at battle rating 11.0, has some decent amount of flares, in fact more flares than it does ammo. Uh, but it doesn't come with any radar. It comes with that radar gun sight, and have a look at that cockpit. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? This is probably one of the more slept on planes of the patch, and I think, honestly, it is an absolute beauty, and uh, definitely worth a try. Absolutely worth your, worth your money, with a couple of caveats, of course. Recently, the uh, flares in War Thunder have been pretty damn strong, and as a result, it does mean that you have a little bit less of a chance to get kills with missiles. Getting kills with missiles is going to be a lot more difficult and so what you should be doing is re releasing these missiles in certain situations where you basically know you're going to get a kill. Um, these type of situations are very similar to those in the MiG-23 video that I discussed earlier where you are probably most likely going to be getting kills on people that aren't paying attention. These are the ones that are going to be your kills, and of course, if someone flares, it is practically game over for Mr. PL5. Now, I am in a match here with a couple of uh, people that I'm, I would say that I know. These are a couple of guys on my Discord. I have Maximus there and a J72, and I have, uh, I think it's fictional, in the uh, plane behind him. So I release one missile. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up heading the right way. However, the second one does connect quite perfectly, and there is a very, very close shave there. Now, um, this particular FG-1 is in a little bit of strife, and unfortunately, he is basically fucked. He's dead. He's gone. He has been shot down by a missile, but that's okay, because Maximus has helped me out with a couple of very distracted enemies. F4E there, down, and this F4E is ready to join the return to hangar button crew. So, we're basically down all of our missiles, and we have ourselves a couple of very nice kills, which is not bad at all, but what do we do from here? You're equipped with 60 rounds of basically NR-30, but the NR-30, I don't know what it is, there's something about it, I can't aim it, and it is very, very tough. I think it has very slightly different ballistics, or the ballistics have changed, or I'm just not used to it. This plane is so hard to aim the guns, I don't know what it is, it is ridiculously hard, but I'll tell you what, what it lacks in abil ability to uh, just get off some shots and have a great time with that, you have plenty of maneuverability. Not enough to sustain a dogfight against things like an F5, but certainly enough to keep you going for a couple of quick little turns before you manage to uh, either knock someone out or grab some help or get knocked out yourself. Now, in this situation here, it is looking very, very hairy. The F5Cs are everywhere and they're starting to pull a lot of kills in. These are very, very dangerous planes. Do not mess with them, do not turn with them, because these things will absolutely smash you in every turn. Now, this particular MF here is in a bit of strife as well, and unfortunately I can't save him, I just can't pull the plane around in time. At the end of the day, it is a J7 or a MiG-21F, so it is going to have a little bit more trouble pulling onto things like F5s. However, against Phantoms, you should really have an issue. Consider this thing to be basically like a MiG-21MF except 
without radar and with flares so it's very very similar I would perhaps suggest that it could go down to 10.7 considering that it doesn't have a radar and radar is extremely important at 11.0 however it still does pretty well at this tier it's pretty damn decent we have an f5 here and an f4e these are basically the guys that are going to be giving me all of the strife in the next couple minutes and I have a teammate here that might be able to uh, get some kills. I'm very low on ammunition, I have pretty much nothing left and it is tough to aim so I am having some massive, massive problems here. I'm trying so hard, I'm down to two shots and it's, it's just not worth staying in the fight anymore but I think I have to unless a couple other teammates die because I'm not really going to get any more use out of my teammates unless I bait for them and that's pretty much where I'm going to like call my shots or or cut my losses if you will now this f5 is in a vertical and nice and slow so I'm gonna go for the shots maybe and unfortunately I miss I've only gotten like two or three gun kills with this thing and it is ridiculously hard to get them I, I don't know what it is I think it's the ballistics but that uh, basically settles it. I have to go back to base. There's no two ways about it. I'm starting to, uh, I think I'm starting to run low on fuel. I have to take max fuel, by the way. And of course, being out of ammo, I am practically useless to my team apart from being bait. And seeing as though my enemies are taking it the offensive to my teammates, then that means that I kind of have to skedaddle. I have to get out of here because I can't bait for my team because the enemies are on their six and that basically would wrap it up for this particular set, like part of the match. I can't really do anything. This plane has fairly uh, like a fair amount of capability, but it's all in the missiles. It's not in the radar. It doesn't have any other remarkable guns. It has no Vulcan cannon like the Americans. It has no really nice 20 mils like the say the the Demon or the F100. It does, however, have those PL5Bs, and in this case here, I'm going to kind of show you the benefits here of the PL5Bs. This is one particular show, or this one particular map, uh, that I wanted to show off, particularly because of this little section here. We're coming in against an F5, and of course, I go for guns and uh, can't really get the shot on. So what I decide to do is I decide to do a single turn burn and uh, try and cut in on the inside and have a look at the uh, at the bore. I'm able to lead the missile a lot more than I otherwise normally would and go for the shot, which gives me the perfect shot onto the F5. This is the type of stuff that the PL-5Bs are unique for, and this is the absolute crazy stuff that you can pull off with the PL-5Bs. This is the type of stuff that makes great planes in War Thunder, and this is what I really like, because you have something that is unique. Now, this thing is basically a powerful J-7-2 with minus one gun and a couple of extra bells and whistles, but... Those extra bells and whistles, being the PL5Bs, RWR, and flares, make it a lot more competitive and a lot more enjoyable. Apparently this plane is from like the 1990s, so I I have no idea about it. I didn't even know it existed. I would have probably just gone with it if Gaijin had said, yeah, we're adding this plane, and it turned out to be totally fake. Uh, it seems real enough to me, <laughs> but um, this is basically the kind of stuff that you're going to need to get yourself into. You need to get yourself into situations where either A, your enemy isn't paying attention, or B, you are in a multi-engagement situation, or C, of course, where you can cut on the inside of your opponent and they're not going to flare within a reasonable distance, like um, 700 meters, for example. I think you would pretty much be on the, on the right side there. So, what am I going to be doing now? I am basically the last one left on my team and I have no one else left to, to support. I'm on my own because my, my teammates died and I couldn't support them in that section earlier. So I'm going to check out the airfield. I'm pretty sure this is one of the new airfields with the new surface to air missiles. I will discuss that again in a later video. And of course I have a blind hunt on me that's targeting me and so I basically have enemies that will likely be coming towards me. So I'm going to try and head towards the enemy airfield, but not too close that I'm strafing or too close that I'm, you know, going to be invasive. But what I want to do is see who's taking off and see if I can pick off someone when they're slow. There are the surface to air missiles starting to open up, and I didn't realize I was getting that close until they started opening up, of course. I would personally like them to be 
limited to that five kilometers but and eight kilometers is 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 a bit massive to be honest like you you think about eight kilometers as the di like the span of it what you can do and what you can't do in eight kilometers and of course now i'm hitting the map border which is not very good it's going to respawn me at a very low speed and then of course because i'm in cloud cover i don't know who is going to pop up and where and an f4c pops up five kilometers away from me this is really really bad not only that you can see on the mini map that someone else has popped up in front of me i have to avoid the aim 7d and of course now i'm on the back foot this is really really bad this one move has basically cost me the whole match and there's nothing i could have done to have foreseen it nothing i could have done to have avoided it i'm trying to get some guns on but i just cannot make the shots it's not much that i can do maybe i can get one and maybe I can take him down with me. I pick the F4C because that's the one that's going in the vertical. Nice and slow. Aim 9 or PL5B away. And this is basically it. I can't do anything else. And that is game. Unfortunately, that is just the way War Thunder matches are these days. And like I said, I will have a discussion regarding a couple of things that could potentially be better in the near future. But for now, we're going to be checking a little bit more of a... Uh, I guess a little bit more of a positive matchup here where again in the uh, j7e and we have americans and japanese as our enemies these particular guys are of course the most effective in my opinion just because they have so many flares and because of the vulcan cannons and the aim sevens the aim 9 js are also pretty good but of course you have a large volume of flares in this plane so i would be more scared of the americans than i would be as say russians or even germans to be honest it's those aim 7e's that are really really powerful and of course the energy retention of the phantoms being a real point against the j7 you just can't really keep up with it but in saying that this thing can still do some work and it can still live up to these enemies just the same way that the mig 21 mf and the mig 21 smt can do the same that being said, I do believe this plane should go down to 10.7 because it is more akin to say the MiG-21 SMT and MF. I think it is also somewhat similar to planes like the Draken uh, being a plane that has two out of three of the uh, sort of bells and whistles if you will. I would consider them to th those three of course being radar, RWR and flares. Now something like the Draken has radar, RWR but no flares. The J7E in this case has a radar gun sight which I don't really count to be radar to be honest it's not a search and track radar it's just a gun sight so I would say that this thing has flares and I would say it has uh, RWR and therefore it has two out of the three nice bells and whistles so it should be a very strong 10.7 and that will still stand and it'll still hold quite nicely now I am looking to help out some friendlies here, looking for the most distracted Phantom, and I think it is going to be this one, just because he's out on the periphery, and I don't want to be getting any of them that are uh, already in, because then that'll sort of pigeonhole me into enemies that are, you know, not the last in the sushi train. So then I can't make mincemeat out of all of them. I managed to get myself a nice cheeky F4E kill. The F4, uh, the F1 F4 J is not paying attention and therefore ends up paying a repair cost. So we are starting to get a little bit of work done here in the PL5s uh, with the J7E. I'm going to go into the vertical. These guys uh, have been turning, they've done a couple 180s and now they are in a situation where they're going to have lower energy. F5 decides that he wants to uh, send me a friendly AIM 9E. I say no because flares and that's one of the nice things about the J7 you won't be able to fight on the aggressive very well but you will be absolutely brilliant on the defensive now F4E is looking very fine with that um, missile well, actually it was going for the F5C and the F4EJ behind me is also looking pretty no lovely and um, no flare for you because he's not going he's not going very well he's he's going back to the hangar that's where he's going so, who have I got left? I basically don't have that many enemies left. Once those original furballs or that initial furball has sort of been destroyed, there's not much left of the enemy team. And that uh, might go boom effect or that domino effect, if you will, where if you lose a, a plane, you're more likely to lose more 
sort of occurs. You end up with one plane gone and then all of a sudden another and then two more and then four more and then by the time you've realized your whole team's gone in two minutes because everyone happens to be fighting in a massive furball. And that's kind of what's happened here. I've gotten myself four very nice missile kills. Two of those were not paying attention. Three of them, well actually four of them, were not really paying attention. And as a result we have a pretty sold game. Nothing is nothing is basically left. Everyone is dead. And that's where the J7E sort of shines. Where your enemies aren't paying attention and where you have plenty of uh, targets that are also not paying attention. Speaking of not paying attention, I thought that MiG-21MF was not paying attention, but uh, I, I don't think he likes me. I'm not really sure what his problem is, but uh, it's always fun to, not really fun, but it's always interesting to see uh, some, some lovely souls out there. This is probably like team kill attempt one of three uh, recently. I haven't been doing things much better myself. I've There have been so many blue on blues, it has not been funny. But uh, this one, clearly intentional. But um, J7E is clearly the better dogfighter here. <laughs> Double Delta for the win, and of course it is nice and light. Oh dear, it's, uh, it's a wonderful world. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is the J7E. I think this plane is a real sleeper, despite it being, in my opinion, a little bit hot, too high in BR. It is definitely a very interesting plane. But um, ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments what you think on this plane. But for now, that will do it for today. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.